according to the power that works in you. The Holy Spirit power. The same power that raised Christ from the dead. That's the power that ta he's talking about. The same power that created the heavens and the earth. That's the power that's working on the inside of you. The same power that's in God is the Holy Spirit now inside of you. That power he wants to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can ask, think, imagine. Now, if you can, go with me to Joel chapter 2. In Joel chapter 2, we also hear this scripture quoted in Acts chapter 2. But in Joel chapter 2, verse 28, it says, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams. Your young shall see visions. And also on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. That means you don't, it doesn't, it doesn't matter if you're a boy or a girl. The spirit of God will be poured out upon you. Amen. Amen. Verse 30. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Hallelujah. And so if you, if, you look, if you saw in that scripture, it talks about visions and dreams. It says that the spirit of God will be poured out and that we're going to be receiving visions and dreams and, and that we're going to prophesy. In other words, we're going to speak. Amen. You know, you, you got to keep, you got to get, open your mouth. You got to open your mouth and begin to declare the things of God. Amen. And it's okay if people don't believe you. You're not trying to convince them. You're trying to establish your faith. Amen. You're building your faith. And that's why it's important that, you know, that when you do speak, you know, try not to speak to a bunch of, of doubters. You know, the world likes to say haters. <laughs> you know, speak to people that can believe with you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, you're going to do great things in 2016. Great things. Oh, I saw some people that didn't open your mouth. You didn't even open your mouth. You didn't even believe it. You could not even believe. Either you couldn't believe it for yourself or you couldn't believe it for the person next to you. <laughs> He's like, Pastor, I know me, but... <laughs> Look at them and say, you're going to do great things in 2016. Hallelujah. What are you doing? You're prophesying. You're prophesying over them. You're going to do great things in 2016. Amen. And so we're putting our faith in the Lord. Yeah, my father, he showed me how to believe for God for God. Uh, believe God for the impossible. You know, he was a great man of faith. That's why this church is called Faith Pleases God. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please him. And so faith really brings God a lot of pleasure. When you start saying, you know, God, I'm just going to trust you and believe you, and I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight. Now God said, thank you. I've been waiting for, our, for you to start walking by faith all this time. Tired of hearing you complaining. Tired of hearing you moaning. Start, I want to hear your praise, and I want to hear you start getting excited about your future. You know, God is excited when you're excited about your future, and you start speaking faith, amen? Not, not speaking about the things that you see, but call the things that are not as though they are. Walking and living by faith. And that was my father. My father just believed. He, he taught me how to believe for the impossible, to trust God. He had a vision and a dream that only faith could answer. Only faith in God could take him there. You know, when my father would, would, would I remember as a little kid sitting on his lap and we'd be watching TV and, and he would begin to say, he would say, Kevin, let's pray, let's believe. And he, he would begin to say, I call in a billion dollars for the preaching of the gospel through television to the nations. Amen. In a home in San Benito, Texas. 
And, uh, you know, I'm a little kid, so I'm like, yes, Dad, that's going to happen. I'm ready for it. He believed it. I believed it. Amen? And, and it takes radicalness like that. Believing God beyond your abilities, trusting God, putting your faith not in your strength, but in the strength of the Lord. Amen. Purpose has, has a great deal to do with it, too. Some people say, well, I'm going to believe God. I'm going to be a millionaire. Why? So you can buy a bunch of houses, a bunch of cars, leave your wife, leave your family, and die lonely, broken, poor, defeated. <coughs> oh, Pastor, that's a bad confession. Well, examine, examine those that win the lottery. That's right. yeah. Examine your favorite sports athletes who do not have a support around them. I'm amazed how many multimillionaire sports athletes go bankrupt as soon as they retire. Things without purpose, they get destroyed quickly. Your life has to be with purpose. You have to be living for God in everything that you do. Amen? Amen. And so my father had a purpose for the increase was for the preaching of the gospel. It wasn't about buying new things. It was about spending it on taking the word of God to the lost. Whether he had much or he had little, he took the word of God to the lost. And he became an example that I'm living my life you know, at, at following his footsteps where I, could, I, I look at, at, at myself and, and I just use my faith to do what God's called me to do. The same way my father would pray, the same way I pray. As God answered his prayer, God has answered my prayers too. Amen. Amen. Whether I little or much, I'm, I'm going to serve the Lord. Amen? Amen. And so I want to just ask you a couple of personal questions. Are you dreaming? Amen. Are you dreaming? That's the first question I want, I want to ask you. Are you dreaming? Are you beginning to see beyond your abilities? Are you dreaming about the possibilities of what God could do in your life? Now understand, my dream and your dreams are too different. You're not going to be like me in every area. There are going to be some areas that God is going to use me as an example on how you, you can grow and be. But, but there are some dreams and things that God has called you to do that I will never do. But the one thing that we have in common is that everything that we dream should be dreaming to give God glory. That's right. Amen. And so whether you're, you're dreaming about your business or your family or, or your health or your education and all those things, begin to think, how can I give glory to God for those things coming about in my life? Amen. So the first question is, are you dreaming? Are you dreaming about what God could do in 2016? Amen. Amen. And, and the second question I have for you is, are your dreams too small? Are your dreams too small? Many times we, 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 we limit what we could dream because we think, well, okay, maybe I can increase this much because, you know, I see the potential of increase in finances or increase in, in, in prosperity, you know, maybe because I have this investment and you're still limiting yourself to what you can do. But it's not about what you can do. It's what God can do through you. And so are your dreams too small? Do you need to make a bigger dream? Are you thinking, well, I'm believing God that God will bless my home. You're dreaming too small. Why don't you start believing God that God will make you a blessing to many others' houses? Amen. And so we, we have to dream big. Amen. Hallelujah. Go with me. To Ephesians chapter 3. And I want to say this last statement, this, this next statement to you. If you can dream it, you can do it. If you can dream it, you can do it. It always starts with the dream. If you're not dreaming, you're never going to do it. There are a lot of times you, you see something and God says, I want to do that in your life. And you can't even think about the possibility of God doing it in your life. You let it go beyond you, and you look at others, and you say, wow, look what God has done through their life. Look how great, how awesome. And, and God says, I want to do that through you, too. And you, oh, no. Don't you know I'm from San Benito, Texas? Don't you know I'm from Brownsville? Don't you know I'm from Harlingen? Nobody's ever done that in Harlingen. Well, you're the one. You're going to be the first. Get ready to be that, that, that Holy Ghost astronaut. 
explore, go into places no one else has gone before. Amen. Hallelujah. So if you can dream it, you can do it. Tell your neighbor, you can do it. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, Above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. Exceedingly, abundantly, above. Exceedingly, abundantly, above. All that we can ask or think. That tells me my dreams are too small. Because God says he's going to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or even think. If you're thinking about nothing, God will do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can think. Sounds like multiplication. Zero times zero is zero. But if you're dreaming and you're asking, he says he will do exceedingly, abundantly, above. How amazing is our God? According to your bank account, according to your education, according to your history, According to where you, the city you were born in. No, no. according to the power that works in you. The Holy Spirit power. The same power that raised Christ from the dead. That's the power that ta he's talking about. The same power that created the heavens and the earth. That's the power that's working on the inside of you. The same power that's in God is the Holy Spirit now inside of you. That power he wants to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can ask, think, imagine. According to that power that's working. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor the, the Holy Ghost is working in me. <laughs> Prophesy to someone, tell them the Holy Ghost is working in you. Yes. Hallelujah. But you have to give them something to work with. Right. You have to give them something to work with. He can't work with, with zero. He can't work with, with someone who, who can't have, that has no faith. And the reason why you have no faith is because you have no love. Because if you have love, you'll be thinking bigger than yourself. You'll be thinking, wow, I got this treasure in my earthen vessel that could produce for the needs of mankind. God has given me the power to change this world according to his power that's working in me. Because start using it to change some things around here. Yeah. Stop complaining about all the, the crime in this area. I'm going to start blessing this area. Yeah. Stop complaining about all the sickness in my area. I'm going to start praying the healing power of God in this area. Yeah. Stop complaining about, about all the, 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 the divorces happening. I'm going to start being part of bringing marriages closer. Yeah. According to the power that's working in me. Amen. Amen. And so we have to use our faith to build 
the dreams that are inside of our lives. If you have love, you could, you could, you could use faith. The thing about it, the difference between love and greed is, 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 is greed will, will, only be, will always be limited according to the pain that you could feel. Because that's the motivator of greed, the fear of not enough. Something happens in a person's past and motivates them so much that now they're greedy today because they think that, that they don't want to be ashamed of not having enough. And even when they have millions and they have things that are beyond what most people could even think about, they, they, they still feel as poor as, uh, as anyone else. That doesn't, doesn't sound like, like prosperity to me. It sounds like captivity. But a person that, that has faith even though they might own nothing, they possess everything. I heard a story about Mother Teresa who, who established her ministry in, in India. She used to go and, and wash the lepers and take care of the homeless and, and provide shelter and, and homes for, for the orphans. And here, Mother Teresa, you know, she was being awarded in front of all the United Nations. And so all the nations were represented, represented there to see this woman who has been used to help so many. And, and the thing about it is man always looks at the flesh and says, oh, that person is awesome. But they don't recognize that the force that's inside of her, the Holy Spirit, was the one that was doing exceedingly above all that she could ask or think. And so that everything she did was by her love for God and her love for others and faith that the power that's working in her can help her to do the work that her heart is calling out to do. And so she stood before the United Nations as she was receiving this reward. And as she was standing there, she began to look at all the, all the nations and all the leaders and she began to say, if you don't want the unborn babies, give them to me. I'll take care of them. If you don't want the homeless and the hurting, send them to me. I'll take care of them. How can this one woman look at all the nations of the world and say, I'm gonna, I'll take care of them if you don't want them? Because she recognized that it was not her strength, but it was the power that's inside of her. Her dreams were big. Amen. She might have not had nothing in this world, but she possessed everything. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Holy Spirit power is inside of you. Amen. Great things are done beyond our imagination by the Holy Ghost. It's Holy Spirit power. I remember when I was being challenged in this area, as I began in the ministry, there was always just a lot of needs and always a lot of lack. To tell you the truth, nothing has changed. They just get bigger. Yeah. And when I stood in front of this ministry and, and uh, I, you know, I received the church with less than 100 people in the entire church, that was counting everything that would move. And the bills were so huge and so great. And, and I just had to put my complete trust that God was going to take care of us. And the Lord did. The Lord provided. And he took care of us. And he got to a place where, you know, I, I just followed God and everything. And, and television was the main ministry that we would do, send out the TV programs. We're broadcasting on the air 24 hours a day, seven days a week to every nation on the uh, face of the earth, right here in Harlingen. That big dish over there was not just there for decorations. That tower back there was not, is not decorations. We, we needed that at the time to send the, the gospel to the nations. And so uh, here I was, you know, following God, and, and the Lord had us healing. We needed a lot of healing. The church had, had gone through so many difficult things. Uh, ten churches split from this church, and you name it, they happened here. People were wounded by each other. People just walked away, and, 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 and people didn't know how to trust and how to love one. And I just came in here, and the Lord says, I just want you to love them and show them the love of God. And that's what we did. And as we began to grow, you know, one day, the Lord began to speak to me. Uh, he, he began to, to ask me a question. He said, and we had stopped doing all television and everything. And he asked me a question. He said, what would you do if you had no more bills? Now, just, why don't you all dream a little bit right there? 
If you had no mortgage, no car note, that everything that you made, you got to keep. He said, what would you do with, if you had no more bills and you could just do whatever you need to do with the, with the church resources, the church money? And I said, God, you know, I would buy television airtime because one half hour program will preach to more people than a lifetime of evangelists going from church to church. God, you know that I'll use it to, to bring people to know who you are, to bring the, the gospel to them. And then God began to take me through a journey and he began to show me how, how I've been living in the desert. How I've been just thinking about my own personal day-to-day food. I just want to get beyond today. So I was just, God was faithful to give me daily manna to feed me for the day. And, and, and he was faithful to cause the water from a rock supernaturally to, to, to bring me drink in the middle of the desert. But it was not his best. He was showing me how I was living in this desert all this time. And he's trying to tell me, he, he said, don't you know my best is my promised land, not the desert. My best is where, where you could sow seeds because I commanded the ground to produce a harvest according to the seeds that are sown. And he, he began to show me that it's not something that I physically have to get there to begin to accept it, but it was by faith that I made a transition in my walk and in my, in my dwelling. All I had to do was change my heart and change my mind. And as I changed my heart and changed my mind, I would begin to live in the promised land. I was waiting to see the money come in before I began to think differently. I was waiting to see everything change before I began to believe. Anybody could believe God after after everything comes through. But God was saying, make a change in your heart. This is by the Spirit. And I made a change in my heart, and I walked out of my house that day declaring, we are debt-free in the name of Jesus. We possess everything in the name of Jesus, and we shall reap according to our sowing. And I began to put my faith into action. I began to tell my wife, I said, honey, we're going back on television. She says, when? I said, I don't know. How? I don't know. How are we going to pay for it? I don't know. But we're going back on television. We're preaching the gospel on television. I began to call the TV stations and ask them for times and prices. And, and they started opening up the doors and they started giving me prices. And I began to pray and believe God. And step by step, people, one man came from Mexico just driving, uh, driving through the freeway. On the freeway, stopped, pulled into the parking lot, walked into the church and said, Are you, do you want to sell those little dishes over there? Those little satellite dishes we had in the front? And later on, he he said, I didn't know what to do. I just know I need to talk to somebody about television. So so he sat down with me and he says, I I just know that God wants something with television. And we got together and began to speak about what the Lord was speaking. Next thing you know, he's giving me checks to pay for the television airtime. Come on, somebody. Doesn't even come to this church. Don't you know that God still knows how to bring in the ravens at the right season, right time to feed you? And we started putting our our hand to the plow, using our faith, and little by little, the Lord began to increase. We started on Sunday morning, and then then God opened up doors for us to go Monday through Friday. I started looking at this thing. We're going to saturate this community with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're going to preach the gospel so that anybody hurting or, or lost knows that there's a place that they can find hope in, and they can find Jesus when, when they turn on that channel. We start reaching out to the lost. I can't tell you how many people getting ready to commit suicide, but they turn on the TV, heard the word of God, dedicated their life to God, and now are serving the Lord. My brother right here, Rick, leads thousands of people to Christ, feeds thousands of people every month, heads up the ministry, uh, the food ministry. He got saved through that TV program. Not just him, but his family, his brothers, his sisters. Whole family comes to the Lord. Can't get him out of the church. Had to give him a key. I could have said, well, God, I believe you on the other side. God, 
when you change my situation, my circumstances in the physical, then maybe I'll do something for you. God, when, when, when I see my bills paid, then I can start dreaming again. I want to tell you, it's not about where, it's not about being on the other side. It's about right where you're at. When you're weak, begin to confess you're strong. When you're poor, you begin to, to, begin to confess that you are blessed. According to the power that's not working on the outside, but it's working on the inside. The Bible says in Proverbs 23, verse 7, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. You have to change the way you think. Begin to think that you are great. Begin to think you are great. Begin to think that with God, all things are possible. That the power of the Holy Spirit is in you. That's why it's so important to fellowship with the Holy Spirit because when you fellowship with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit reminds you that you are greater than what you have thought you were, what you think you are. He begins to remind you that you are a son of God. Amen. So begin to think that you are great. Tell your neighbor you are great. Come on, tell that other person that you don't look at the whole service. You are great. Look them in the eye and say you are great in Jesus' name. You are great in Jesus' name. And when you fellowship the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit rewards you with his presence and reminds you how much you are loved and how great he is and how greatly he loves you. God will provide for what you need. He wants us to partner with him. I don't do this on my own. I do this with the Lord. He's your partner in business. He's your partner in life. He's your partner in ministry. He's your partner even in death. He's your partner in life. He is your partner. You have a Holy Spirit par partner, amen. amen? Hallelujah. You do what you do, but God will do what he can do. Yes. Amen? I want to just read three scriptures to you. In Matthew 7, 7, it says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. John 16, verse 23 to 24. And in that day, you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. Amen. Hallelujah. Scripture talks about that if you lack wisdom, that you must ask of God who gives to all men literally, liberally, and reproach is not, and it shall be given him. If you need wisdom, ask. If you need provision, ask. If you need favor, ask. Scripture says you have not because you ask not. Why aren't you asking? Because you're not dreaming. 